Evening and welcome once again to Gaming Under the Influence. I'm Mike here with Alex, coming to you from Green Dragon CVR in Woodbridge to talk about video games. How are you, buddy? Oh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good, man. How about you? Not so bad. Uh, Finish Unicorn Overlord. Oh. Looking forward to Stellar Blade this week. Yeah, Stellar Blade is coming up, and uh, I'm surprised you finished the Unicorn Overlord, because I didn't Me know too. it was a... Uh, 70 plus hour yeah, game like honestly i thought it would be like between 30 to 40 at most oh, very long yeah wow. for me it was very long i uh and thought it was incredible though we're gonna have to make an episode just i was gonna that say yeah it's a credit yeah. to how good it is that you finished 70 yeah. hours i have no plus, complaints about it whatsoever it's amazing. also incredibly rare so we'll, we'll we'll talk about that i have a lot to say about that game in the world and how well it's built and stuff like that but nice. uh, this week i thought it'd be cool to talk about the fact that Stellar Blade is coming, yes, as we just Oh, said. yeah. But it's not the first game like itself, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not the first uh, Korean Sekiro-like in the past 12 months, you know? It's not. It's hot on the heels of Liza P, That's, which was... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Incredible Souls-like. You've heard yeah. me uh, rave about it multiple times, you know, in the past few months, and uh, I'm ready to do so again. It's an incredible game, and I... Uh, I'm starting to think that there's something of a trend here, you know? Yeah, it seems that way. And I mean, obviously, we've been following uh, basically every Souls-like that has, you know, yes, been since since existence yeah. that we can get our hands on anything worth talking about or, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it seems that we've gone through the phase of uh, them being made, you know, in like the Western trend. Yeah, Western like that's Souls kind of gone, right. gone, you know, we've gone through that. And now it seems like Korea has taken up the, the mantle and they've it does been seem making that way. it. We, we saw it with Liza P. And now we're seeing it again. Stellar Blade. And coincidentally, maybe not coincidentally, actually, <laughs> they both play like Sekiro. Yeah. So Sekiro, that, right? That is super interesting, right? But the first little while, the Souls-like genre is around. I don't know. I think I'd peg the start of that genre, Souls-like, yeah. uh, with Neo. Probably the first Neo game. Yeah, I think Neo was one of, yeah, one yeah, of the Yeah, there was ones. a couple of little things. Um, what they had in common with Souls is that they were all more or less RPGs. You know, mm -hmm. even the mm -hmm. simplest ones still had build options and... Uh, yeah, a little more build diversity yeah. things going on you know overall items. they were very clunky games maybe neo was something of an exception at the time but it's still compared to you know recent offerings in the genre does not yeah, feel like yeah. a post bloodborne souls like right? right so i think that's what characterized those games and you know they were they were pretty good but now looking back on them i don't really feel like they were too special honestly that's that's my that's my retrospective on most of the I souls like genre like it's bright points fair. for me were the the korean ones here Yep. The couple Most of indie recently. ones, you know, like Hellpoint, I thought yep. was one of the best, actually. And uh, the original ones, man. Of course. You know, there's a lot of decent games. I enjoyed a f fair number of them, like Code Vein, The Search 2, but a lot of those titles were... Yeah, like the Star Wars know. ones, I was not a fan no, of. Like, I couldn't get into them. Straight those up. Was probably one of the worst of yeah, them. Those were, those were just straight up not... Here, let me... I don't like those. Let me quickly look this. I, I wrote down all of the, the Souls likes. You know, this is fairly exhaustive list of the souls legs that i've dabbled in um since the genre came out and you know looking back at them the high points for me were really hell point i think remnant was pretty good but yeah. still not quite a masterpiece you know yeah yeah fair not, enough not uh it was an See, enjoyable a game, solid but, entry but not yeah, uh peaking yeah, like you yeah. know like, it was iterative it was no masterpiece though right you know it added some interesting aspects to the genre um there was some good 2d games like blasphemous. blasphemous yeah that was a high point to me people really liked hollow knight for me it didn't really do it as much um salt and sacrifice yeah i really liked as well but again looking back at this list like what stands out to you as uh you know canonical like essential yeah it seems like um with lies of p they almost uh they smashed new ground for a souls like game i yeah, think they that's, reached that's, that's a higher I'm, and then that's yeah that's that's what, that's what you're that's getting what at I'm here exactly. and that's what we're hoping ultimately is going to happen with stellar yeah. blade after playing the demo it seems to be hitting levels of uh you know like gameplay like like sakura yeah and uh i think it's gonna hit those same uh i think so. accolades I, I hope anyway yeah like listen to these titles you know we got thymesia neo 2 strangers yeah. of paradise lords of the fall and steel rising immortal unchained yeah some good some not no, so not good like, long. Yeah. like they're they're pretty good games yeah. like a lot of those i enjoyed yeah you know but they're not no. masterpieces no they're not and, works and of art anybody so far as I'm um, concerned, right? anybody you talk to that has played lies of of P will tell you this. It is thing. actually they, they will is, tell it you is that. one of yeah. the best souls like they, ever yeah. made. It, it's like, a rival of From Software. I remember you easily. saying it. Yeah. Then I played it. I mean, admittedly, I haven't finished it, so I haven't played much of it. But I was like, okay, I can, I can see it. And then, you know, seeing other people react on the internet, I was like, wow, like I, 
they really actually nailed. If you told me it was a front off game, I'd yeah, be like, yeah. you wouldn't even you wouldn't even bat an eye. That's it's how good incredible. it is. Incredible, and in many it. ways, it exceeds it because of its yeah. technological element being superior, right? So that's why maybe holding Stellar Blade up to that regard is dangerous. But uh, let's see. I think it could hit almost the same level. I think so, right? Maybe it'll be make, almost just as good. This is what's <laughs> going to be interesting to talk about yeah. today. See, like I feel like, given the fact that the companies have this in common, you know, mm -hmm. I think the their director forward developers. Yeah, you know, I think the director has a very similar structures and they're going in same, similar yes, paths, yes. right? I can't comment on if uh, Round Eight or the 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 uh, Liza P developer, if that guy yeah. owns or runs his own company. Mm -hmm. But I know he's the director of the game and that he's the guy doing all the interviews and explaining the concepts yeah. with great fluency. Like he's, you know, he seems the very idea guy. Competent right? at what he's yeah. doing, right? And, yeah. He's the overlord of the project. Exactly. You know? And uh, it is the case, actually, that the Stellar Blade dude does run the company that he works at and right. is developing this game for. So we have a Kojima Much slash Miyazaki-like situation. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that speaks to... Well, I mean, in the case of Liza P, it's already borne fruit, but here probably we can be optimistic about that arrangement. You know, yeah. we've talked about this in the in the past, but it's good when financial interests are decided by creatives and not by and not suit dummies, as yeah. Ricky would call them, you know? <laughs> suit dummies. Yeah, here we can bring in a recent IGN interview with Humte Kim, the director of Stellar Blade and Yoko Taro of Nier. Yeah. Uh, they were discussing the making of both of their games, and uh, actually Yoko Taro said, this is much better than my game. So that's <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This interview is quite funny. But um, one comment that uh, I thought was interesting was that Korean developers are apparently much quicker to adopt uh, Western technologies like Unreal for the making mm -hmm. of their games. Mm -hmm. And they speculate that it might have to do with the fact that people are more proficient in English in Korea than in Japan, apparently, on a, a larger volume of people, that is. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense if uh, they are speaking English to quickly yes. adopt these tools, right, that's that right. are written in English. Yeah, so. that's right. I think what these Korean souls-like games are defined by, at least technologically, is the fact that they're made with Unreal and not with, uh, you know... Like homebrew Which Japanese like, yeah, their uh, own engines, engines yeah. essentially. Yeah, that does help too because they have a shortens development time. Yeah, they have know. extensive tools. They have extensive like help if uh, yeah. you know studios yeah. need help. It's just yeah. it's like what I think a, tons of people use it, right? Like it's one of the most adopted engines, like, widely really? adopted oh, engines yeah, yeah. in the world. My, so my, I think we may have talked about this before, but my yeah. position on this kind of stuff is that technological advantage for the artist is desirable because it relieves material effort and yeah, uh, exactly. makes it more possible to yeah, focus like on. Only, only the biggest companies are able to actually produce an engine. That's a yeah. huge undertaking. Yeah. And then, you know, but you, you have know. to, at that point, you have to use it because you're not just going to abandon it, all that money you wasted sure. making it and use Unreal. But for studios just coming up, just jump in Unreal, especially if, like you said, they're English proficient. That's amazing, yeah. right? Uh, I think it frees up effort to be devoted to, uh, to artistic and conceptual tasks instead, yeah. instead of being focused on purely material ones, right? So exactly. I yeah. think it's, you know, I, I think I look at the, the the existence of that kind of stuff favorably yeah. myself. I'm sure there's some nefarious backroom uh, financial and political elements involved in a middleware software developed by an American company. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But uh, speaking from the perspective, like putting yourself in the shoes of the guy who's making the game. Yeah. Supposing you have a concept you want to express, this relieves the expression of that concept. You know? Absolutely, yeah. I don't think the art consists in your mastery of the material or the technological element. It consists in your idea. And if it's easier to express that, great. You know, yeah. It's not worse, right? By all means. I guess it's easier than ever before for, you know, these companies to be popping up with, uh, you know, artists and having good ideas and wanting to make yeah. cool games. And yeah. it's, it's amazing to see that they're choosing to make, you know, not only Souls-like games, but also almost Sekiro like yeah. games that's the important part right like yeah great we've observed now that they have for these various reasons the material ability to make games like this but the important thing is the kind of thing they're choosing yeah. to make with yeah. it right that's insane people have tools like that in the west but uh, short of like respawn entertainment whose souls like games personally I don't think are very good they're not yeah they're not very good games I don't games. think so either um, short of them who's uh done anything like that in the west I don't people know, like uh, we were just talking about have they not uh, practically jumped ship on this genre already it seems like it. yeah like maybe uh we might not be totally familiar with the indie space so if uh if we're missing something yeah those are still coming know, up like, uh, those but, are still coming up but yeah as far as like the triple a double a space it seems like the west moved on from the yeah the a number of likes and they never really made Sekiro likes no. like the Koreans are right now. No, no, maybe it's Thymes amazing. Oh, Thymesia was uh, yeah, okay, from, maybe uh, Thymesia. I think it was from Taiwan, not a oh, Western was it? game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Look, there yeah. you go. That's right. Yeah, 
So there you go. Another <laughs> look at that. Happy somebody's carrying on the, uh, the trend, right? Yeah. I, I think it's interesting because we've spoken in the past about how, in my opinion, Sekiro is like the crystallization of FromSoft's uh, design philosophy. You yeah, know, it's taking okay. all of the good elements of their their way of building a game and it's cutting away all just the like fat distilled and into silly like unnecessary perfection. elements <laughs> and just making it perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it does, you know? I think even it's way of I, you know not so much the writing which i think is good in all the games but mm -hmm. the way that the story focuses on a character with clear motives and a role in yeah. the world and forces right? you to play as yeah. you know that character would act yeah, right? i think it's like always that's, better when there's yeah I, I think just generally determinacy of the work is always desirable not formlessness, yeah, yeah. not choice yeah. these are not good the thing should be formed it should yeah. have like rough loose edges right and in that respect sekiro is a first-rate game and yeah. it's cool to me that you know published you by activision by the yeah. way <laughs> i know great that's also hilarious eh? here it's funny Never because old. we have a studio you know in both lies of p and shift up here making stellar blade these are yeah. studios that uh, have a history making like shovelware like mobile games and yeah just, yeah that's how sorry, they came yeah. up i like your games now but that's shovelware like, yeah yeah you know they'll probably say the same thing yeah. i mean maybe not i'm sure they have regard for the stuff they make but yeah. at the same time the genre conventions are such that you just can't make something like you did with yeah P, it's very clear like that. that they've taken money that they've made from you know their startup mobile this or whatever that and are like hey and like now i want to express something really cool right that's Let's right make this and i think that's fantastic that's case scenario it's like the opposite <laughs> trajectory of western studios who yeah. like they, they they make a great single player game everybody loves yeah. it it's a masterpiece then they're bought by like some stupid mm -hmm. publisher or console manufacturer and like a generation later they're just yeah. making mobile games or yeah, sea dying, of thieves they're like tell you that uh yeah. single player games are dying yeah. and, uh yeah. whatever and here we have been. a studio the likes of which ea would you know it would be EA's wildest dream to have a studio like that making mobile games for them, and here they yeah, are. Yeah, like, they're successful, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Having succeeded with that, they're on to make the kind of thing that, you know, we revere here in yeah. the West, right? Or at least I do, and it's, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone in my regard for FromSoft's games, you know? As, as unique in uh, in the video game space uh, yeah. in 2024, right? No, there's definitely interest, uh, aside from the whole, like, TNA aspect of the game. We should probably mention something about the character's body in Stellar Blade because yeah. it's become big, such a big talking point right now. It's become a, 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 a flashpoint of oh, uh, yeah. one or another of the ongoing culture wars on the internet right now. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's worth saying that a lot of people are thrilled about the statement being made with the design of this game's character because there is one being made. Yeah, for sure. And that statement is the political orthodoxy governing our artistic expression in the West right now. They're not concerned with it, right? And so if you believe like, you know, we've talked about before that work of art should exist for its own sake and not in service to a financial motive or uh, some political orthodoxy, then you can only look at this rejection of those conventions as a good thing. It's a good that's, thing. That's my yeah. opinion. Yeah. yeah. It's not about sexual attraction or no. uh, any other. It's literally about the fact that in saying, nah. Yeah. Like we're not going to do, you know, we're not gonna whatever do the heck you that's want wrong. us to do. We're going to do what we want to do because yeah. it's our game and yeah, that's it. I think uh, it's a win for for the integrity of the artwork mm -hmm. that for the sure, thing yeah. is so clearly not regulated by the same uh, external considerations that yeah. many of you know games like Alan Wake Two are right. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. And, yeah, uh, good for them. Why not, right? Like, yeah. I'm, there's no reason why they should be caving to the demands of anyone and anybody. No. It's your game, sure. yeah, right? I what mean, the hell? That's uh, it's an obligation imposed on them by uh, the art yeah. that they're making that they not do that kind of thing, right? So, yeah. I, I like that, and I think it's a piece with the fact that they're making something like a Sekirilla game at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not what the market dictates right now, right? It's yeah, exactly. not what the majority of people want to see or play or buy. So, I think that, you know. A lot of things about this game speak to the uh, to the fact that we should be optimistic. Yeah, of yeah. course. It's all very impressive. I'm very excited. That and the fact that we played the demo and it's good and it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Goes without saying, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's enough of a commentary on this issue. Eh? There's something of a surge of single player souls like games out of Korea. Yeah, I'm here for it, man. Coinciding with uh, the decline of 
video game industry in the West. Yeah, anything good in the West. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The decline not only of single player games, but of all games, apparently. All games so, in the West, yeah. I think that this is good, man. I feel good about this. Yeah, yeah, same. Things are coming out that are great from places in the world not afflicted by the exact same problems as us. And uh, exactly. I think it's to be expected. And it's something to be celebrated, too, because it might lead to a sort of recalibration of you know how we do things here yeah hopefully how we depending make on here, right? you know what is successful and what you know yeah what sells well what people are playing it it all factors in right these yeah. things are people are going to be looking at and a lot of studios around here are tanking and closing and being infiltrated by nonsense so yeah we go where the games are and apparently uh korea has the games right Korean now so like <laughs> yeah look at that right how exciting yeah and i think it's safe to say you know there's probably probably contributing to the to the release of these games is all these material factors like mm-hmm. uh, access to american technologies like unreal and unreal stuff like this, engine so. yeah but definitely. the first and foremost is the fact that there is a developer possessed of something like artistic integrity i think yeah you know a concept worth making not in service to secondary motives be they financial or exactly bourgeois politics you know neither of them yeah incredible uh, thing yeah man i uh, hope we can come back next week and talk about how awesome it is we definitely will we'll see you guys then thank you very much